Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, my name's Michael and I'm going to share with you today my experience using Capture One. Now, uh, this is totally new for me. I haven't uh, used Capture One. I've sort of resisted in the past, even though I've heard a lot of um, good sort of praises for it, particularly uh, if you're using Fujifilm. And um, I sort of persevered with Lightroom and uh, even editing JPEGs in the uh, like in the standard Microsoft sort of um, very simple sort of picture editing software that comes with Windows 10. And uh, yeah, so it's been quite interesting. I only got it a couple of days ago and I haven't really you know, sat down too much. I went out to the park and just took some pictures with one of my old Fujifilm cameras, the uh, XE2S. And I uh, was editing them and I was looking at the pictures and I was thinking, wow, it's, uh, it's different. They're very sharp. Like they seem to be just much sharper for some reason. Uh, Previously on Lightroom, the images were never sort of that crisp, the edges and, and that sort of thing, like it was just a bit muddy, a little bit muddy. Um, and of course, when you zoom in, you got the worm artifact situation happening. Now with, um, with Capture One, it's a little bit different. So if I zoom in very close on the maximum, uh, you can see you got, it's sort of pixelated, it's probably too much, but um, it's a different sort of situation anyway. I'm, I'm in the crop mode here. See, I, I still really don't know too much about what I'm doing. I'm just going to get rid of that. And um, so for instance, this picture here, um, I'm making some changes here in with uh, the contrast, you know, you can go up and down. Um, brightness, I've turned the brightness down a bit to sort of take a bit of that um, harsh lighting out. And the saturation, I had a little bit of saturation, even though well, I probably didn't need to, but in this sort of landscapey sort of context with the natural stone building here, and uh, the grass, you sort of want to bring out that beautiful textures. Um, I've turned up the clarity on this shot. If you look, that's with no clarity. Uh, sorry, I didn't get it quite to zero. So that's with uh, zero clarity there. And you can see that it's, um, it's still very sharp. Like you can see these, these um, grass blades here. Uh, Everything's very sharp. I think the camera obviously has focused here and not on the building, unfortunately. So how I'm finding it, let's just uh, cut the chase and stop mucking around here. Um, it's very, very different to Lightroom. It's not like Lightroom at all. Uh, it's not a simple sort of, I'm going to put this program on my computer and get into it, you know, straight away sort of situation. I'm very used to Lightroom. Um, I really like Lightroom. I like the way that it's lay. I still like it. I still prefer like its interface uh, much better than Capture One, um, simply because I seem to have everything at my fingertips that I want. I, and um, and there's a lot of uh, useful things that I know where they are. Perhaps they're in Capture One. They probably are somewhere. It's just that I haven't discovered them yet, uh, which is annoying. Uh, so like for instance something that I'm looking for is uh, like in Lightroom you can get um, like when you're taking photos of buildings and you know poles or things like that uh, you can get them to automatically get corrected and be vertical in the photo. So that's I find that um, quite a useful tool often. Um, and it's just like a click of a button and Lightroom will usually get it correct. 
Uh, I find that with Capture One, I don't know where that tool is yet. I mean, I'll probably have to research it a bit more. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. I mean, they've got to compete with Lightroom, so surely they're sort of offering the same sort of tool set. <laughs> Uh, I haven't sort of worked out how to erase imperfections or things that you don't want in the image um, in Lightroom. Again, that's a very simple process. You know, you just press the the button and, you know, you, you highlight what you want to uh, remove and, you know, you can pick another spot on the screen to sort of uh, copy or whatever. You can... Um, and it, it's a simple process. I know what I'm doing there. Uh, here, I've seen there's a spot erase, but it's a circle, and I can't sort of drag it across t to make, you know, ununiform shapes and things. And I find that that's just not working for me. Uh, that's um, really annoying <laughs> at the moment. Um, again, I think that there's probably a tool in Capture One somewhere. Um, again, I've probably got to go and watch some educational videos and teach myself how to do this. Uh, the file system is also a little bit different. The file system, uh, it's sort of more, they've got these things called recipes where you can process, uh, you know, the, the image with a recipe, which I guess is like different settings, you know, whether you want to come out as a JPEG or um, a TIFF file, the size of the file and all that. There's lots of um, adjustments. It's really um, involved here. There's a whole lot of things you can choose, which I guess is good if you're an advanced sort of person, but not so good if you're not. Um, looking for all those extra features and you just want to sort of export files easily. So basically there's a, uh, you start off in the library where you can uh, import your images so you can choose where they come from. You can create a new session. Um, it's got different sort of terminology to Lightroom. So it, it's all very new, it's very different. Um, it's gonna take a while to get used to. But what I will say off the bat, uh, with my very limited use and very limited experience, is that the images are like, wow, they're really good. They're like, this is definitely a huge step up from uh, using Lightroom to edit Fujifilm images. I mean, this is really good. It's amazing. Uh, what I'm getting out of this is so, so much better than what I've gotten out of uh, anything with Lightroom. It's just so much better. I mean, for instance, take this picture of uh, this fence post, which is um, a pretty simple sort of picture. So you start off, you select the image there on the side, that's all sort of, you know, you can sort of guess your way around that. Uh, and uh, so I'll go over to here. You've got these different tabs. That's another thing I don't like. I don't have everything that I want sort of. I don't know how, how Lightroom fits it all in so well. Like they, they seem to have everything on the page that you need virtually, except for a couple of things. But nearly everything is there just a click away. But with this, you definitely got to go into all different tabs and, you know, Probably it's a lot more um, involved, but uh, anyway, I'll, I'll do a simple edit on this and I'll show you what I've sort of thing that I'm doing so far. But um, you can enter lens corrections. So on this, this tab here, you've got lens corrections. So manufacturer profile, I don't know if I have to import them or what it is. Um, it doesn't seem to have anything for Fujifilm. Uh, here we've got the histogram again. Uh, we had that previously there. So here, the histogram, um, you've got this layers section. I don't know what you're gonna do with your layers. Uh, exposure, so I can turn the exposure down or up. 
I can increase contrast. So you can just see how phenomenal that this is a simple, you know, picture. I was just grabbing some shots to edit basically, but you can see like it's so beautiful. Like <laughs> it's amazing. Um, brightness, you know, you can turn brightness up or down, which I guess is kind of like um, turning the highlights up or down. And saturation, you know, you can make things really saturated. Or you can turn them down and make it black and white. Um, just sort of leave it there. There's clarity. Clarity, you turn it up and again the image starts to take on another sort of dimension. Uh, becomes really crisp. You can see already just how crisp and you know sharp this image is like look at all these uh blades of grass like they're so clear like this is just it's like i've got another camera it's it's quite amazing there's big big netting here so you know you can have the white edges you can have the dark edges um you can choose you know whether it's a circle or elliptical so that's all good, very nice. Uh, so what else do we have here? Uh, we also have on this tab here, which is the details tab, uh, we have opacity, so you can adjust the different layers, I guess, how, um, how much they affect each other. Like layers, I never use layers for anything really. Um, but sharpening, now sharpening is something that I noticed really affects the image in these Fujifilm files. Let's have a look. So sharpening, if we start off with nothing, you can see already the image is very crisp and sharp, like just like that. It's really crisp and sharp. It's beautiful. You know, I can zoom in, you can see everything's got nice fine edges very nice but you know when you wind it up look at that like it really it's amazing isn't it you know let's not forget too this is not one of my good cameras this is just my old xe2s okay so you know 16 megapixel i know it's a good camera i mean those old 16 megapixel um, sensors were really good look at how it's sort of transforming this very simple and nothing really picture into something that's a little bit interesting um, and the clarity and everything is just so amazing here we have some preset styles so if I highlight run the the pointer over the top of them you can see we've got black and white contrast and black and white looks beautiful I and mean, then look at that wow okay black and white neutral um, one of the things I do like to do in Lightroom is to create a virtual digital copy. Um, like when I want to do a black and white and a color, sometimes I like to have both. And in Lightroom, it's very easy to just sort of right click on the image and create a virtual copy. With this, I haven't worked that one out either. So <laughs> I've got a few things to work out. Um, it's frustrating, but just looking at the image like this, and I'm just like, Oh my God, it's, it's gorgeous. You know, when you put this black and white contrast in, that looks phenomenal. You know what? So I'm going to export this. I'll show you how I've been exporting. Um, there's a metadata tab and then there's this output tab. So if I go to the output tab, I've already got my settings in here. Um, I think they're all set up correctly. I'm just export, exporting as JPEGs and I just press process and it goes through and processes it. Uh, the other thing I've noticed with this is it must be quite um, processing or processor intensive. Um, I found that uh, like, you know, when you open an image, not the whole thing comes clear, like you sort of get this much clear and then it starts to sort of expand out as it sort of unloads the picture into the machine. So, I guess that's um, not in Lightroom. Lightroom's very snappy. The picture comes up straight away. 
it's obviously less um, processor intensive so I'm going to go back and change this back to color because I want to get a color one as well I'm going to press process I haven't done this before so I don't know whether it's gonna have a problem or if it's just going to create two files okay so anyway that's just a quick little sort of overview of me clunking around and what it would be like possibly for yourself if you were a new user of Capture One. Um, I did get it on special. Uh, I think the special ends today, so if you want to get it, you might be able to still get it. There's a Fujifilm special at the moment with 50% off, I believe it is, which is a really good deal, and that's a license for life. Um, so yeah, I really recommend it because the images that I'm seeing here from these simple shots are just really blowing me away and I'm thinking wow this is the process that I'm going to be using from now on with my Fujifilm stuff because it's just too good okay so hope you enjoyed that and I'll catch you later bye